Oh, very nice. Oh my goodness gracious. Would you believe that? Oh, I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it. Hey, how's it going? It's another week in. We got more mail. Um, if you saw last week's video, I showed that I got the jazz singer, and it was the Australian version, not the Warner Archive three disc version, which comes with all the documentaries. I did actually return that. Um, I've since watched uh, one of the others, at least one that looked like the most obvious bootleg, the Vamps one, and it ran fine. And it was okay. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, I'm getting my big $50 <laughs> refund for the jazz singer. And I'll probably reinvest that same money into the exact same thing from someone else that I trust on the Ebays. Anyway, this stuff I got from Amazon. We have Christopher Lee, the movie featuring Dracula. Oh, In Search of Dracula featuring Christopher Lee, the movie. Um, this is a Kino classic release. Um... You know, not much to write home about in terms of artwork and everything. You get a nice picture of Christopher Lee there with a moustache. And you get the special features, which I believe is a trailer, as well as the audio commentary by film historians Lee Gambon and John Harrison. This is a... Oh, I think this is an older release. Um, I can't remember. I know it's a 1975 film, whatever. It's more or less like a documentary about how Dracula was a real person, and then kind of being a bit wanking on there, hey, we also did a bunch of Hammer horror films with Dracula, go watch them, cough, cough. But I only got it because Lee and John did the commentary, so yeah. And I mean, it's only 82 minutes, so to watch that twice and to have a commentary by two people who are excellent at commentaries, um, yeah, that's the preference. Then we got a film which I thought was a absolute masterpiece. I watched it on a Criterion channel. Now I have the 4K of the apartment. Um, I figure I should just show it rather than telling. Unfortunately, no slipcover or whatever, no alternate artwork, but it is really nice artwork nonetheless. Um, and it does come with a slew of special features there. I did watch the, as I said, on the Criterion channel, and I was just wanting to watch a comedy. And it suggested this. It was in alphabetical order. And I was like, oh, The Apartment, Jack Lemmon, you know, it's, uh, what is it, it's a Billy Wilder? He's done some really good comedies. <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't really paint it as a comedy, more of a dramedy. Um, but it is a absolutely beautiful film. And it comes with, what, two commentaries, one with film historian Bruce Block, one with film historian Joseph McBride, author of Billy Wilder, Dancing on the Edge. There's a Inside the Apartment documentary and Magic Time, The Art of Jack Lemmon featurette and a theatrical trailer. Of course, two discs, 4K and Blu-ray. I've heard that the 4K looks stunning and... Yeah, it did win five Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screenplay, which is wonderful. I kind of wish they would determine what the other two were, but that's okay. I'm just really happy to have it because it was just, it was breathtaking. There's not many films that just make you cry on first watch, and this was one of them. It was just so beautiful. Highly recommend it. And then I got... Chinatown, the uh, Paramount Presents version, which is very shiny. Um, I got their new steel, the their new 4K, which comes with a poster on the inside. I'm not huge on the book design. It's fine, I guess. Like it's a fancy way to sleeve it. I do have the Court Jester, which is like this as well. Oh, and now I broke it. And now I broke the cardboard. Anyway, you know, you get your artwork, which it's it's fine. I don't. I don't love it. I like the way that they've put, fonted the title and everything, which is nice. You know, you get it on the spine as well. Discs are made in Germany. So this comes with the 4K for Chinatown and uh, a digital code. Oh, we'll do that in a second. Um, so yeah, 4K of Chinatown, Blu-ray of the two Jakes. And artwork on the inside, which is just images from the film. It looks mostly like it's images from Chinatown itself, which, yeah. Definitely just images from Chinatown. <laughs> just really funny. It's one of those films where I got this specifically because I wanted the two Jakes, but also I have the old Australian Blu-ray, and at the time, for like $24 or whatever, because it was on sale, you could get the um, Australian version of Chinatown, which is just a 4K disc. But it doesn't have... I don't think it has any special features, and if it does, it has very, very minimal, which is... 
really kind of depressing. So this one at least comes with new. Uh, State of Mind, author Sam Wasson on Chinatown. It also comes with the commentary of the director and David Fincher. Sorry, commentary with screenwriter Robert Town and David Fincher. Uh, Chinatown Memories, the trilogy that never was. Water and Power, Chinatown and Appreciation. Um, uh, Chinatown The Beginning and the End, Chinatown Filming, and Chinatown The Legacy. And of course, disc two is The Two Jakes. For those who want a digital code copy, there you go. I'm not a digital copy kind of person, so that's just kind of me, but there you go. Um, there's still a few of these in this line that I actually really want to get, so oh, Nutty Professor in 4K could be really nice. But yeah, it was just that element of the JB had a version for sale, and I was like, oh, that's all right, and then the UK version, which had the collector's edition set, was also like, you know, that had a lot of special features, but it had all this reproduction elements, and it was like 75 to $100, depending on where you got it from, and I was like, that doesn't really interest me that much to get all that kind of stuff. Like, I like the film, I've got the Blu-ray, I don't really need this kind of stuff. But then they had Chinatown on 4K, which comes with, again, the two Jakes, and it's like, it was $66, and to get all three of these that you've just seen, I got them all down to, like, I think 110 or 120 but either way, I got, like, five, six dollars knocked off each one of them, which was, like, that I'm okay with, especially because I wanted the Chinatown thing, and that's basically, like, two films for, th for 30 bucks each, and I'm like, and that's, one of those is a 4K, so... It worked out, and it's a beautiful film, so I'm very interested to rewatch it and to watch the two Jakes as well. So um, I'll get around to that eventually, and the others. So let's see what else we got in this week, if we got anything at all. Probably, hopefully. Let's see. All right, this is the second half. Um, firstly, shout out to Caitlin said it was Carl and Jack. I don't know. I so bad with names, but the guys from Ballarat who are at the most recent Cinemaniacs for Count Yorga. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> I, love, I like, love meeting subscribers in the wild. It, 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 it's, I'm pretty sure I've met you guys before. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. I love it. I just remember the fact that it's from Ballarat. Oh my god, if, 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 if I'm wrong and it's Bendigo, that's on me. But it's a long trek to get to Melbourne, so... um. Yeah, anyway, uh, first up, uh, I ha it hasn't been built yet, but this was my birthday gift to my dad for his 60th birthday, because it's Yellow Submarine, and it's the Beatles, and he loves the Beatles, and it's Lego, which I love, so, um, it's expensive. One thing that I would like to note about the Chinatown thing, um, I actually was wrong about earlier in the clip. I think I said that it didn't have, the Australian version didn't have any special features or it didn't have very many. Uh, it actually has the exact same special features I saw the Blu-ray in store today. Um, I'm happy with this version anyway because I still watch the two Jakes with it and I'm happier for doing so rather than being like, God damn, I kind of wish I had the two Jakes and whatever. So um, in the end, superb 4K. Absolutely stunning. Um, uh yeah, looked great, sounded great, perfect. It's a masterpiece of a film. The two Jakes, the Blu-ray is fine. It's a good looking Blu-ray, good sounding Blu-ray, no special features. The film itself is fine, but yeah, um, good set though. My partner and I went to Chadston today and they have a, what the hell is it called? Uh, something Mart, I always forget what's called. It's Moco Select. We went to Moco Select, and they had Godzilla things. They've got minus one things now. They had these fat, chibi ones, which were fine, but looked a bit too cheap and, ch uh, you know, crappy. Um, and they ha So they've got three different variations, the uh, um, Atomic Breath one, the black and white one, and the color version. And obviously there's not too much difference between the black and white and the color, except that it's completely, like, black, grayscale for the black and white one. Um, whereas the uh, color one looks more like the you know the, the color version of the movie, uh, they didn't have the color version there, which I didn't really want. I think I played it real smart. I got the this one. Uh, he comes with a little thing, so he sits upright because his tail is kind of. I wonder if they designed it and realized, oh shit, he falls over if he stands up. Uh, let's let's design a little thingy to just shove on there, so when he stands, he stands flat. So, 
It's a minus one Godzilla. I hadn't bought one of these yet. And this guy was like 40 bucks. So actually it was $41. My criticism mostly as a design choice is the fact that the mouth is clearly just all painted in. Um, but outside of that, he's not too bad. Like it still has that kind of cheapish plastic look where you can see the glue seams around the chest and whatever. Um, it's not going to focus very well on him. So I apologize for that. But he does look very nice and for a very, you know, good price version of a figure that's not the fucking Funko Pop. Um, looks really good, and my big surprise was the fact that he's, like, it's a completely chromed down tail for the, for that factor, uh, the atomic breath, and they're all translucent, which is so fucking beautiful. Um, so yeah, really, really liked just this whole look. Again, the only complaint is maybe just the mouth and the little glue spots on it. But again, you see them down. He's a big Chungus, fat feet. I love it. It's just a great addition to the collection. Always good. The box is huge. For no reason. You take it out and it's just all this one piece of cardboard stuck around with him in a plastic bag. Very strange. Then obviously, because I had gone to JB, which is where I saw Chinatown, I actually saw they had this whole display. If you're on the JB Hi-Fi page on Facebook, um, I had made a post about it actually. Um, they had all these like steelbooks and special edition, like limited edition releases in like a glass cabinet, just locked up. Here's all the like the, the DC steelbooks and for some reason a bunch of Viavision releases, all these limited edition ones. They still had some on the regular shelves. But then these ones were just locked away in here. So, yeah, it was uh, strange to see that. Um, I will try to include a photo if I remember to. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's cool. It, it's such a weird place for it, though, because it's uh, if you haven't been to JB Chats, and obviously they've got their shelves, they've got this whole superhero section, and adjacent to it is all these pop vinyls. But the first bank of it is these four glass, like, locked-in shelves of all these, like... Um, well, they're just cabinets with, I think it's like board games and stuff, because it's like that kind of pop culture area with like board games and stuff. And I just had the first one is just that stuff. Just all these Blu-rays and stuff locked away for some reason. Anyway, um, I got Black Rain because uh, it was one that one of the guys, uh, always, some, someone Maguire, oh my god, I always forget. He's the goddamn admin of the, of the page, and he's a subscriber, I know that. Because uh, he, he comments every once in a while, um, <laughs> very nicely, uh, comments on my videos. Adrian Maguire, there we go. Shout out to Adrian. Um, wonderful admin on the JB post. Uh, I also feel your pain for the fact that people keep asking about Marvel and DC stuff. Uh, sorry, Marvel and Disney stuff when we don't get that in Australia anymore. Anyway, uh, he had posted about this, and I was like, that sounds interesting. It was like $18, like $17.98 or some shit, or $16.98. I've always $17, I think, in total. This apparently has all the special features from the old release. Um, it's identical to the old release, just with new artwork, which I don't have the old release. I've never heard of the film before. So I figured, hey, this sounds pretty cool. I wonder what it's about. And of course, I, for once, actually did something that is very unlike me. I read the synopsis on the back. And it's like, you know, from direct love Ridley Scott. I was like, okay, that sounds pretty, I like Ridley Scott, you know. Um, talks about how he created stylish adventure thrillers like Alien and Blade Runner. Hits his mark again in Black Rain. Academy Award winner Michael Douglas and Andy Garcia, two people I do like in movies, play New York cops whose job to esque whose job to escort a vicious assassin back to his native Japan leads the two Americans into Osaka's exotic underworld and straight into the center of a raging, brutal Yakuza gangland battle. I love how it's Yakuza in quotation marks. Um, so that immediately strikes me as, hey, that actually sounds pretty good. Also, uh, my dad would love this because he, he, he loves anything set in Japan. <laughs> so... He that's he constantly watches the Wolverine that one Japan the one Wolverine film where he goes to Japan just because they're in Japan so I think he dig this and we both like Ridley Scott so yeah great love it I don't show these off too often but I got a little for to the start spooky season off these strange hands um, mystery box of things they're all just hands uh, I, I personally my favorite's the Jello one because it's a black glove. Um, but of course, you pick out a mystery, and I got the little stitched up hands one. So, yeah, it's got little wheels on the feet, 
and you just you wind it up and he crawls along. So it's a little stump. I don't know, it's cute. I don't really show that kind of stuff off on this channel. Last but not least, I have not yet unwrapped any of these. This is the momentous part, the saddest part for me, um, after having just come from another Cinemaniacs event. Uh, this is my last order from the Cinemaniacs. I have no pre-orders, no nothing else lingering or waiting in the winds. They ended as a retail store last, uh, shit, two weeks ago now. It was actually the, the end of uh, August or the start of September. Um, and I had put the, an order for these in just before it closed because, uh, well, for the most part, these are all Kino Lorba releases, but they're all titled Kino Cult, which I'm not a huge fan of because I don't like numbered stuff. Huge gripe with numbered stuff. I left my knife in a different room. Hold on. The benefit for these ones is they all come with the sleeves, which is obviously always, you know, fun, mostly because, again, I'm not huge on American cases and how thin and small they are. Um, it's not a commentary, it's just just a fact. So, I got these four beautiful films. We got Food of the Gods, Squirm, a delight, uh, Kingdom of the Spiders, and Empire of the Ants. So let's dig in on them. Start with Food of the Gods here. Um, when I showed these actually to John, uh, because he was at the Asta today as well, he lives close by, which is nice, um, he actually was surprised I hadn't gotten Frogs, uh, because Frogs was another one of those eco horror films that they had put in this Kino cult list outside of a bunch of like re released 4K scans that were now on UHD discs, including like Zoltan, the Hound of Dracula, which I do plan on getting actually. I did not get Frogs. I would have liked to have, but there's no point for me. I already have it. I have the second side version. I've had it for like a year and a half, two years or so. Yeah, it just didn't interest me to get it at all. So um, I think it's like the exact same special features, like the same transfer. Uh, so this does come with audio commentary by film critics slash authors Lee Gambin and John Harrison. Love how I quote uh, John Harrison as the author of Wildcat, the films of Marjo Gortnar. I have that book. He gave it to me. It was very nice of him. As well as an audio commentary with writer, producer, director Bert L. Gordon or Bert I. Gordon. Seems like an I. And an interview with actress Belinda Bal Balaski. So this was another one that I got because, uh, oh yeah, alternate artwork by B. Um, so they do have Kino Cult as a label. <sighs> Again, I'm not happy with it. I don't give a shit for numbered stuff, like I said, but also cult films. Like, I get it. These are going to go for, like, obsc more obscure horror films and whatever, but, I mean, isn't that what most of Kino's goddamn vault is anyway, for the most part? Obscure horror films? Um, or just obscure films in general? So, yeah, it gets you a, a, a bunch of rats, by the looks of it. Food of the gods. Uh, I don't think it's different images on the back, but, um, yeah. I just realized it is just a giant rat. So that's the benefit of the slip cover for a bunch of films like this where you'll get different artworks and it's just it's just great. Like you can use the sleeve to showcase a different artwork that's already, you know that's that's a huge benefit. Huge plus. Oh, when was Foods of the Gods? Is that seventy six? God damn it. I also have a thing where I love movies in the years 1977, so I've been collecting a lot more of them. Unfortunately, Food of the Gods is not in that list. However, this next one, which is still meticulously shrink-wrapped, there we go. Kingdom of the Spiders, which comes with a slew of special features. Um, if I take this baby... Oh my god, the artwork's already been changed. Oh no! <laughs> I wonder if this means that there's three different types of artwork. I guess I'll find out. Uh, so yeah, it comes with, as you can see there, if it'll focus, uh, audio commentary by film critic slash author Lee Gambin, audio commentary by the director, producer, and a bunch of actors, and cinematographer. That's a lot of people. Um, another audio commentary by a producer and an actress, and an interview of an actress and an interview of the writer. So there's, there's a lot on this one. That's great. Um, again... One that benefits from the fact that it has uh, Lee on the 
commentary. Okay, this is, this one's mental. It has three different pieces of artwork. Um, so obviously, yeah, you've got that one, which does look really goddamn nice. <sighs> the temptation to also use this one. <laughs> The benefit of this set is the fact that it is a clear, transparent case. But man, I don't know which one I prefer. I kind of... Well, that just looks like William Shatner. <laughs> I think it is. A wild science fiction nightmare. I really don't... I'm going to leave it as it is for now, but I really do like that inside artwork. That's insanely tempting as to which one I display. But again, they're both covered by a slipcover, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but that's wonderful, especially because the slipcover itself is an amazing piece of artwork. So you get three whole pieces of artwork for one very cheesy looking 70s film, which I imagine would just have regular tarantulas, which are usually harmless anyway. It's one of those things of these eco horrors is that most of the things that are like killing people are usually pretty harmless. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, rabbits. They're, they're, they're giant now, so they eat people, I think, kind of. I've seen Night of the Leapers. They kind of eat people. Of course, Empire of the Ants, which is a... I, the, this, this is one that doesn't have uh, Lee's anything by Lee, which is not disappointing, like it was bound to happen. As you can see there, was this, 1977 as well, audio commentary of film historian David Del Val and film historian... Filmmaker slash historian Michael Varati and one with the writer and director, sorry, director, producer. Uh, again, Bert I. Gordon. Why would you have an I there? Is Bert Gordon not enough? It's such a weird thing. Oh, well, my middle name is an I, so just chuck that in there for good measure. It's not confusing at all. Okay, this is fun. Empire of the Ants. Look at all those fucking ants. I'll definitely change that around. <sighs> Again, um, I I'm either really, really tired because it's currently like almost midnight and I've been up since 6 a.m. Isn't life fun? Um, or maybe it's just that sense of wave of wow, look at all this ants and stuff. Again, how much, how much different is King of the Ants going to be to ants? The movie with a big exclamation mark. Or like something that, something manner, I can't remember. Not a great film, very much a kind of daytime kind of soap that then also happens to have a swarm of killer ants. So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, unlike the ants, because if they do that, they might die. All right. And of course, in my classic fashion of saving the best for last, we have Squirm. I'm so excited to rewatch this. I think. Yeah, we definitely saw this. We saw this at the Cinemaniacs a couple of years ago. Um, this one is amazing. Uh, again, 1976. Disappointing. Disappointing, I know. Um, but this one, outside of having an exceptionally good fucking poster, which was literally why I went to see it, I'm like, that poster looks great. I can't remember for the life of me who did the presentation on it, which sucks. I never remember who did the presentation. Uh, John, if you're watching and you remember, let me know who did the presentation for Squirm. Uh, I feel like it was Lee. He was so big on eco horror. It wouldn't make sense if anyone else did it, but it could have been John. <laughs> I, I can't remember. My memory's so bad. Anyway, this is the alternate artwork, which is stunning. The night... This night was... <laughs> what? This was the night of crawling terror. I'm so tired, I can't read properly. Um, so yes, as a last but not least, this one does have a, as you can see there, uh, audio commentary by film critics slash authors Lee Gambin and John Harrison, uh, plus one of the writer and director, writer slash director, digging in the making of Squirm, Eureka, a tour of the locations with Jeff Lieberman, uh, and theatrical trailer. So yeah, this one's really fun. Um, again, they all have that just essence of being... Man, these are really stupid, uh, but it's just it's just fun. And I figured as a last thing to buy from the Cinemaniacs, it seemed appropriate to buy stuff that like Lee had worked on that was brand new. These were some of his last commentaries that he worked on. There's still stuff that's coming out from Kino and Scream Factory and whatever, 
with him attached to them. Um, but yeah, so, because obviously I'm still collecting a lot of films that he did work on, and these are brand spanking new, and I especially want to listen to the commentary for this one, because I've seen the film. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it means a lot um, to have this kind of stuff. So yeah, um, that's all. Thanks for watching. It's been a week. Anyway, I'm just mesmerized by this artwork. Man, I wish I had like a giant poster of this on my wall. I'm, I'm saying that knowing that my friends want <laughs> the exact same poster, but I'm like, they're not going to buy it from me. They're going to buy it from themselves, which is smart. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, see you kids next time. Adios.